For those of us that thrive on getting out and about and exploring historical places, membership to one of the big three heritage organisations might well be on the cards. But with the National Trust, English Heritage and Historic Houses all desperate to have us on board, you might be wondering which one is right for you. In this video, I'm going to discuss the pros and cons of each organisation, and I'll be sharing with you my experiences of being a member of all three. So if you're still undecided as to which one of these organisations is right for you, stay tuned because this video is for you. Founded in 1895 by three forward-thinking philanthropists, the National Trust is a charity that aims to preserve the nation's places of historic interest and natural beauty. The Trust claimed to be Europe's largest conservation charity, and in addition to its 5.6 million members, enjoys around 8 million visitors a year. The National Trust is responsible for 750 miles of coastline, 248,000 hectares of land and over 500 properties, including historic houses, castles, ancient monuments, gardens, parks and nature reserves. Popular properties include the likes of the Victorian Marvel that is Cragside in Northumberland, the gorgeous Studley Royal in North Yorkshire and the stunning Palladian neoclassical masterpiece Lime in the Peak District. So how much does it cost to join the National Trust? The National Trust has a range of membership options to suit different circumstances. These are built around four different membership types, joint, family, individual and life membership. Joint membership is designed for two adults living at the same address and costs around £120 a year or £10 a month. As under fives are free, this could be a popular membership package if you have young children. Family membership has two tiers and is suitable for either a single adult at a cost of £78 a year and £6.50 a month or two adults at £126 a year or £10.50 a month. With either of these packages you get free access for children or grandchildren so again it appears to offer good value for money. Individual membership is just £72 a year or £6 a month for an adult. £36 a year for 18 to 25 year olds and just £10 a year for under 18s. Another excellent option is the ability to purchase a lifetime membership. In my experience, the National Trust rarely, if ever, offer discounts on memberships, so if you're holding out for a deal, I certainly wouldn't hold your breath. As part of your membership, you will get free entry and parking at all 500 of the Trust properties in England, Wales and Northern Ireland. This also includes car parks owned and operated by the National Trust at outdoor sites such as nature reserves, gardens and coastal destinations. Membership also gives you free access to around 130 properties managed by the National Trust of Scotland. So if you're UK based or happy to travel, National Trust membership pretty much has you covered. Another reciprocal agreement means members also get free access to properties overseas that are part of the International National Trust's organisation. In addition to free access to properties, members will also receive a property guidebook each year, which is useful for planning where you want to go, in three National Trust magazines throughout the year. Another nice little touch is an events leaflet that gets delivered with your magazine. This details local events, so it's really useful if you want to know what's happening near to you. The Trust will tell you that membership gives you exclusive access to the membership area of its website. This really isn't anything to shout home about, however, and essentially just gives you the ability to view your membership type. You can also view bookmarks of places that you want to visit, but this is certainly an area that could do with some improvement. Another interesting perk is that as a member of the National Trust, you will get the opportunity to vote in the annual general meeting. This might not seem particularly exciting to many people, but it is good that the Trust involves its members in its decision-making process. So three things that I like about the National Trust. In my opinion, the National Trust's membership options are some of the best out there and genuinely offer fantastic value for money. The family membership options are also really good and could save you a small fortune if you visit heritage sites often. Unlike English heritage and historic houses, the National Trust cares for large swathes of the English countryside, including large sections of coastline. If you do a lot of walking and outdoor activities, then the free parking at National Trust car parks will certainly come in handy. If food and drink is important to you, then this is something the National Trust does really well. They have some of the best cafes and restaurants going, and the coffee is absolutely excellent. 
I often eat with my family at National Trust properties and I can certainly attest to the quality of the food. Three things that I dislike about the National Trust. The National Trust cares for far more country houses than any other type of property. This might suit you fine, but if you really enjoy ancient history and exploring castles and the like, you might be a bit disappointed with the range of properties on offer. The membership packages are genuinely pretty good, but if you are on a really tight budget, you might find membership of English heritage or historic houses a bit cheaper in certain circumstances. I really wish the National Trust would improve the member section of their website. This is truly a missed opportunity and unfortunately presently serves no real purpose. English Heritage is a government-sponsored charity that whilst originally formed in 1983 was rebranded as the English Heritage Trust when the organisation was split into two separate entities in 2015, the second being Historic England. Whilst the Trust is responsible for the places and collections, Historic England is the public body that aims to preserve and champion England's historical environment. Prior to 1983, the responsibilities of protecting and championing England's heritage fell within the remit of government. Unfortunately, the government were more interested in England's medieval and prehistoric past, with the prospect of running and maintaining large country houses seen as a daunting task. Although this attitude changed in later years, the result is that English heritage cares for far more ancient monuments than country piles and grand stately homes. Today, English Heritage is responsible for the upkeep of over 400 historic properties in England and the organisation has nearly 1.5 million members. Additionally, over 10 million people visit English Heritage properties annually and it is very popular with families and history buffs alike. Popular properties include the likes of the internationally important Stonehenge, the mighty Dover Castle and the dramatic ruins of Whitby Abbey. So how much does it cost to join English Heritage? Like the National Trust, English Heritage offer four main types of membership and are similarly well priced. Joint membership differs slightly in that you can opt for either joint adult, adult and senior or joint senior. For joint adult membership, expect to pay around £111 a year or just over £9 per month. The senior memberships are a bit cheaper so make sure you check out the website for the latest prices. Family membership with one adult costs just £64 a year or £5.33 a month and for two adults £111 a year or £9.25 a month. These memberships include free access for up to 12 children so they are all good value for money. Individual memberships are available for adults, seniors and young adults and students at a cost of £64, £57 and £51 respectively. Lifetime memberships are also available like with the National Trust, if you're really serious about saving money in the long run, then this could be the option for you. What do I get as part of my English Heritage membership? As a member, you will enjoy free access to over 400 properties in England and free parking. There are also currently some excellent reciprocal agreements in place, so English Heritage members will also get half price entry to historic Scotland properties during the first year of membership in free access if you renew your membership. The same agreement applies in Wales and in the Isle of Man members get free access at all times. Members also get free access to over 40 properties in Ireland from the first year of membership and 43 heritage sites in New Zealand. Similar to the National Trust, English Heritage members also get a free annual property guide and several magazines delivered throughout the year. There are some other benefits included in English Heritage membership and these include free or discounted entry to English Heritage events and exclusive access to special member only events. Three things I like about English Heritage. If you are really keen on history and like nothing more than exploring castles, abbeys and ancient monuments then English Heritage really delivers. English Heritage membership is slightly cheaper than that of the National Trust and in my experience you are far more likely to get discounted membership than you are with the National Trust. All of English Heritage's 400 properties are based in England so if you aren't able to travel this might be a benefit to you. Three things I dislike about English Heritage. As mentioned earlier, English Heritage is more synonymous with ancient monuments, castles and abbeys. So if you prefer exploring grand stately homes, your options here are going to be a bit more limited. English Heritage only care for properties in England, unlike the National Trust that has properties throughout the UK. 
Although cheaper to join than the National Trust, I think the Trust is better value for money as it has more properties and offers more variety. Hi guys, I really hope that you're enjoying this video and that you're getting some benefit from it. My greatest hope is that I can get people out and about exploring our beautiful country and exploring our heritage sites. If you appreciate what I'm doing and you want to see more heritage based travel videos such as this, then please do give me a leg up by hitting that subscribe button. I hugely appreciate your support and it means that I can keep making these videos. Historic Houses differs from English Heritage and the National Trust in that it does not own or control any of its member properties. Rather, Historic Houses is an association of independently owned houses, castles and museums whom, in return for representation by the organisation, give its members free access. The Historic Houses Association dates back to 1973 and was formed from a subcommittee of the British Tourism Authority. The organisation prides itself on its ability to influence government policy and in its early years campaigned not only against the destruction of country houses but also the heavy taxation that was contributing to the problem. The association recognises that these independently owned sites form a vital part of our history and heritage and very rarely receive any kind of public funding. The association then can offer its member sites not only financial grants but also much needed advice and support. Historic Houses incorporates around 1500 member properties making it the country's largest collection of historic houses and gardens. And unlike the other two organisations, many of its member properties are still lived in and thus offer a very different visitor experience. Popular properties include Downton Abbey's High Clear Castle, Leeds Castle in uh, Kent and the colossal Burley House, one of England's finest Elizabethan prodigy houses. How much does it cost to join Historic Houses? Like the National Trust and English Heritage, Historic Houses offer a range of membership options. These are not quite as comprehensive as the other two however and sadly do not offer a specific family membership. Instead, you have to add each person individually to your membership in order to get a quote. Membership for a single adult then will cost around £56 per year with two adults costing £89. Whilst under threes are free, if you add two children to your membership, this will come out at about £139 per year. You can basically add as many children as you like, but you will have to pay for each one. I can't help but to feel that a family subscription would be a very worthy addition. Membership to historic houses then, if you have several children, could cost you quite a bit of money. What do I get as part of my historic houses membership? As a member of Historic Houses, you will get access to around 1,500 diverse and interesting properties, some of which are frankly world class. Additionally, membership will bring you an annual guidebook and several member magazines. There are also other exclusive member benefits, such as access to members only lectures and online articles. Three things I like about Historic Houses. The variety of member properties on offer is absolutely incredible. From stately homes to castles and museums to formal gardens, members of historic houses are absolutely spoiled for choice. As many of the properties are off the beaten track, they can offer a completely unique and interesting visitor experience. If you've been a member of English Heritage or National Trust and want something new to do, historic houses could be a good option. Furthermore, new properties are being added all the time so there is always somewhere new to explore. Three things I dislike about historic houses. As many of the member properties are still occupied by their owners, this can mean that they are only open to the public on certain weeks or even days of the year. I've personally been a member for over a year and there are several properties within just 10 miles of my house that I've yet to visit. Membership options are not quite as varied as with the National Trust or English Heritage. For example, there is no family plan. This means that membership can be very expensive as you will have to pay for every child you add to your membership. Member properties are independent and in no way under the control of historic houses. What this means is that every property is run differently and may have different rules or procedures for visitors. Properties can also choose to leave the association, so you could find that your favorite local property is no longer giving you free access. Which should you join? This is of course the million dollar question, but as it's also sort of the point of this video, it's probably appropriate that I give you some sort of opinion. So who should join the National Trust? Of the three organisations, the National Trust is the one that I have been a member of the most. 
I'm currently a member of the Trust and I really enjoy it. For families, this is the best organisation for you. The membership packages are second to none and offer genuine value for money. The properties are really well equipped for catering to families and often have excellent play parks and outdoor areas to enjoy. In terms of variety, this could also be the organisation for you. It's not all stately homes and gardens. The Trust also cares for large areas of coastline and areas of outstanding natural beauty. And for castle lovers, there are even a few of them too. Who should join English Heritage? For people who love history, and in particular medieval and prehistory, English Heritage is the best option for you. Most of English Heritage's properties are lacking roofs, so if you really enjoy exploring castles, abbeys and ancient monuments, I wouldn't even look at the National Trust or historic houses. For families, English Heritage would also be my close second. The family membership options are fairly comprehensive and do offer decent value for money. There are not as many properties as with the National Trust, but what kids don't love exploring castles? All English Heritage sites are pretty well equipped for facilitating families. I just sometimes find that the National Trust have slightly better play areas and picnic areas. Who should join historic houses? It's really easy to recommend historic houses to a variety of people, but whether or not you should join would largely depend on what's available in your local area. There is perhaps little sense in joining if there are few properties available to you and the ones that you do have access to are only open for a few days of the year. I would say the same for families. See what's available locally in order to determine whether it's right for you. Many historic houses properties are still lived in and offer little or no facilities for families. That said, some properties are excellent places for families. For example, Burton Agnes Hall is one of the best kids play parks around and I personally could justify joining historic houses just for this property alone. Do some research, see what's available and see if historic houses is right for you. Finally, for people who have been members of English Heritage and National Trust and are looking for something a bit different, historic houses might be right up your street. Ultimately, whichever of these organisations you choose to join, you're going to have a fantastic time. All feature some fantastic and historically significant properties and by becoming a member you are going to contribute to protecting our heritage for future generations to enjoy. If you can afford to join all three organisations then that's fantastic but if you have to choose just one though do some research and find out which one has the biggest presence in your local area. I genuinely hope that you've enjoyed this video. If you have and you want to see more videos like this, documentaries, and cinematic video tours of historical places then please do give me a leg up by hitting that subscribe button. YouTube tells me that the vast majority of you have stumbled across this channel and haven't subscribed so if you hit that subscribe button I'll keep you up to date with all of the latest videos. Thank you so much for watching and stay safe.